I was the one who asked if you can get pregnant from oral sex when I was 16. Hey, at least I know now. It's a valuable question to have the answer to. I really thought when I was having terrible sex education in the early 1970s mm -hmm. that by now we would have figured it out. Yeah. And there was already a discourse about it at that time. Mm -hmm. And here we are at a time when a few people get terrific sex, sex education, mm -hmm. some, some private schools. What, what makes it so good though? What makes it good is that, that information is shared and it isn't censored, right. that uh, information about pleasure isn't left out, sexual mm -hmm. orientation and just sexual diversity isn't left mm -hmm. out. You don't have to go all the way into mm -hmm. very specific detail yeah. with a young person to, to create for them a framework where they can go add can, their own information yeah. from their own readings, their own research, their, the discussions. I mean, any of us who think that being silent with our kids about this topic will mm -hmm. Uh, prevent the kid from being curious, mm. are living a life of delusion. I've heard promiscuous. When you talk about it, when you flaunt nudity around with your children or you talk about it too early, you are encouraging promiscuity, which I just, I think is crazy. You know, I think there's a difference between comfort with sexuality and one's ability to <clears throat> think about and understand when they're ready. No. The normal, healthy, I suppose. In the Netherlands, it's the norm. Like that is what sex education sort of holds for people. Like, are you ready? Let's talk to your partner. You, maybe mm -hmm. you'll talk to your parents. We'll figure out whose house you are going to go right. and have yeah. sex in. You know, you're, and that is sounds so abnormal in a U.S. context. Although I'm sure some families live that life, but. The idea that a young person can't hear about pleasure, can't hear about specific information that will be useful for them for the rest of their lives. Mm. They can't even hear correct information about safer sex and sexually transmitted conditions yeah. because if you help them learn that there's a way to not get an STI, that will cause promiscuity. The most intrepid parents in the world, nothing terrifies them more than the birds and the bees conversation. It's so true. I've talked to so many super progressive, frisky, sexually comfortable adults who when the time comes to speak to their kids, they, they really get balled up. I just want to say to people that silence is a message. Yeah. Discomfort in communication is also mm -hmm. a message. Your kids want to know all about mm -hmm. what's important in the world through the eyes of their parents up to a certain point. And I frankly, I can remember having these con conversations with my parents mm -hmm. badly. and. I guarantee you that one of the things that made me think, well, I can't trust their perspective on anything, yeah. was those sexual conversations. The current messaging for kids around the world, anybody that is, that is exposed, to, exposed to media, movies, video game, is violence. So not only is silence allowing more voice for that kind of expression, which, you know, when I watch my son playing video games, I, like, it's, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. It's all about shooting people's heads off. But there's, there's nothing about healthy love and intimacy and sex. And I will say this, growing up in India, um, again, as we know, a, a, a generally a very conservative culture, two daughters, the one thing my parents did was bring it home. Yeah. Whatever you have, whatever you want to talk about, whoever you are talking about it with, yeah. bring him home. And reminding parents that you don't have to tell a kid everything about sexuality all at one time. That's not a good idea. That's, a, that's an overwhelming conversation to be part of. It's, it's age appropriate. Yeah. It's, it's just answer the question that the young person brings to you. It's just yeah. start there. 
Just answer the question as best you can. If you don't know the answer to the question, say, I don't like, I don't know about that, but I'm going to look that up and we can talk about it a little later once I've done that. You know, we can be that resource. And if they ask a question that horrifies us, it's good communicate our values yeah. about that. We actually don't think that that's the way that sexual be. questions should be posed. I was the one who asked if you can get pregnant from oral sex when I was 16. Hey, at least I know now. It's a valuable question to have the answer to. I had, let me tell you about my, my epic fail with my own kids in this conversation. Again, seven and 10, driving home from school, you know, Bruno Mars. And again, I, I don't believe that you have to censor the world. I think you treat, you teach your children what we value and, and then they have to do it for themselves. Mm -hmm. So good old Bruno Mars is humming along with us. And at some point he says in this song, I mean, a really nice girl, have some really nice sex. Now we've listened to this song no less than 500 times with no incident except this particular day when my son pipes up from the back and he's like, Mama, what sex? And mind you, it's Wednesday at like 2 p.m. I'm not ready for this conversation. So I'm like fishing through my head and I'm trying to be, okay, look, I, I wanna be I want to be honest, I wanna be real. It's not marriage, it's not boy, girl. You know, I'm, I'm trying to put all these qualifications into it. I come out with, it's something two people do with each other when they really like each other, right? So, mm -hmm so open for that's a little vague. for what i got <laughs> so my my then six-year-old pipes up from the back after a minute of pause mama can you do it to me when we go home <laughs> epic fail at that point i was like abort 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 and let's change the music that's and we like exactly yeah, we, we had ice cream i'm gonna try again i'm yeah, gonna do it again yeah. keep trying till i get it right oh yeah yeah and you could even reference that. <laughs> yeah, remember, remember that Bruno Mars song that we talked about? I actually didn't do a very good job on that. But I think I have a better answer for you now. <laughs> I would start to talk to kids at no later than 11. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of detail necessarily yeah. at that age, but really detail. making yeah. sure that you acknowledge to them mm -hmm. that you know that kids develop at different rates. Mm -hmm. uh, you know that some of their friends might be looking at stuff and talking to them, They're, that, that, that you wanna be their resource, you wanna be their, their you know, family partner as they go through their teens yeah. and learn things and wonder if that thing is right or, mm -hmm. you know, that, that you establish the discussion. And then by the time somebody's 13, 14, 15 years old, then are they getting pressured for sex when they go out to a party? Maybe. Yeah. yeah, maybe they are. And or are they thinking that it's time for them to lose their virginity and maybe they should figure out someone that, you know, that's right. not, it's, it, it, regardless of how we want to think of our kids and the, the path that they will take, mm. the most important thing is to pay attention to the path that they are yeah, taking. Absolutely. And it, it does not do a young person in their development any good for us to have blinders on about the fact that they are in the most hormonally curious period of their entire life. And they deserve answers to the questions. It, I'm not recommending that they go out and try all the things. I'm saying that they deserve answers to the questions that they have.